Alright, so let's continue the mass transfer coefficients for design of wet towers, part 2. In outcomes of this uh, video, if previously we have derived the equations to determine the height of a pack tower using film and overall mass transfer coefficients, now we are going to actually apply the concept of transfer unit to calculate the height of the pack tower. Okay, so in pack column, uh, we are going to use the concept of transfer units uh, to calculate the tower height. This is because in the pack column, the changes in compositions of the liquid and vapor phases occur differentially uh, rather than in stepwise fashion as in trade column because the mass transfer occurs between the liquid and gas phases uh, using the packings as the interface. So, in this method, the height of packings required can be evaluated either based on gas phase or based on the liquid phase. Uh, basically, depending on which phase is more controlling of the mass transfer. Okay, so the definition of a pack power is calculated. So the pack height, packing height is that calculated using the following formula NTU times HTU. So what are NTU and HTU? NTU is the number of transfer units, uh, it's a dimensionless uh, quantity, whereas HTU is the height of transfer unit. Uh, it, it, it has the unit of length, either feet or meters. Okay, so what are the significance of NTU and HTU? So NTU uh, required is the measure of difficulty of the separation. If previously using tray tower, the number of steps, uh, if the more number of steps required indicate a more difficult separation process. So same thing for NTU, a large number of N, uh, transfer units will be required for a very high priority product, um, very high priority product, i.e more difficult to achieve, the separation is more difficult to achieve. Whereas the HTU, height of transfer unit, is a measure of the separation effectiveness of the particular packing for a particular separation process. Okay, so if the values of HTU can be estimated from the empirical correlation of pilot plan test, uh, yeah, but the applications are rather restricted. Um, so here we want to see what is the impact of a bigger or smaller value of the HTU. So the more efficient the mass transfer, i.e. the larger the mass transfer coefficient, the KY, KX, and so on, the smaller the value of HTU will be. Okay, more efficient, smaller HTU. Higher HTU, greater value of HTU, meaning it's uh, less efficient. You're right, the Previously, we have derived the equations, the design equations to calculate the uh, tower height z based on these uh, two, uh, one, two, three, four uh, equations. The gas phase film coefficient, liquid phase film coefficient, or gas phase overall or liquid phase overall coefficient. And you can see the equations from this table. And then, um, so we want to just uh, define this equation in terms of transfer unit. So if you can see here, in terms of transfer unit, let's, let, let's look at number one, gas phase, based, based on gas phase film coefficient. Here, uh, Z equals to Hg times N. Okay, H, Z equals to Hg times Ng. So, if you just see Hg here, meaning uh, it's based on the film gas phase coefficient. Uh, similarly, if you look at number two, H, uh, Z equals to Hl times Nl. And number three, Z equals to HOG times NOG. So O here indicates the overall uh, mass transfer coefficient. G here indicates the gas phase. Similarly, in number four, Z equals to HOL times NOL. So here, O is the overall, L is the liquid phase. So if you just um, compare in terms of the equation in terms of transfer unit is the equation the design equation that we have derived previously then you can um, see in the box here hg equals to this this term okay b over uh, k prime y times a times s uh, so uh, and then putting into the equation the definition for k prime y is actually this uh, Okay, these values here. So this will give you the definition of uh, HTU. So HTU, HTU can be 
So in, in, in terms of HG, HL, HOG, and HOL. So HTU is the general name, but if you put it HG, HL, HOG, HOL, you will be able to indicate whether it's just based on gas phase or liquid phase and whether it's based on a film or overall mass transport coefficient. So if you see the HG, HL, HOG and HOL here, the terms are these values. So here, okay, so these are your HTU. Okay. Then the integrals beside the HG would then be the values for NG, NL, NOG, and NOL, the NTU. Okay, so the general terms is uh, NTU, number of transfer unit. More specifically, you can put it as NG, NL, NOG, or NOL to indicate the uh, based on which phase and based on the film or uh, overall coefficient. By the equations, when the solutions or mixture are dilute, i.e. when the concentration of solute is below 10%. Uh, greater than 10%, then we cannot really consider the solutions or mixture as dilute, then this will not be applicable. So for dilute solutions, the terms with the log mean uh, difference here, with m, m here, can be taken outside the integral for the MTU uh, terms, and the average values can be used, meaning if previously, we have, let's say, for example, mg equals to integral of y2, y1, 1 minus y, im over 1 minus y times y minus yi dy. So, this term here is uh, can be taken outside. And if the values can be estimated to be close to 1, then they can just be simply dropped out. So then the simplified equation would become mg equals to uh, integral from y2 to y1 dy 1 minus eh, 1 minus yi. So it is going to say something is wrong here. Just again. So this term is actually the one that is uh, close to 1. Okay, so then you will, you can simplify the equation for the height uh, as uh, the equation 1, 2, 3, 4. So this would be your NG and this would be your HG. This would be your NL and this would be your NHL and this would be your NL. So we got mixed up here. So this is your HG and NG and so on. Okay, NOG. A H O G N O C H O L N O L. Okay, so easier for dilute solution. And whenever the equations involve the integrals, if there is no analytical relation for the integral, then you would have to resort to uh, graphical integration. But for dilute solution, if if both the operating and equilibrium lines are straight line and apply for dilute solution, the integrals can be integrated using the number of transfer units as defined below. So, uh, previously we have simplified, for example, mg equals to uh, this one, right? Okay, so let's say if both the operating and equilibrium lines are straight line, so you can visualize if that is a straight line, so y. X, let's say for absorption, this one is your equilibrium line, and then this would be maybe your operating line. Operating line is above the equilibrium line for absorption process, so both are straight lines, right? So you can simplify the integral term, and you get, the, instead of integral, you get analytical equation here. Okay, so uh, you can visualize again the uh, towers. Okay. Here, let's say your gas coming in, your Y1 and your Y2. Here, your liquid coming in, X2 and X1. So here, uh, you, if you want to calculate NG, then you just use this equation here. Uh, Y1 minus Y2 divided by Y minus Yi log mean. So here, you, you can use the... Um, 
this equation to to put inside this uh, equation to get the value of mg so just be careful here uh, the log mean temperature so uh, log mean temperature log uh, log mean concentration difference so y1 is this one y2 is this one and the yi1 and yi2 is what we have um, seen previously in the previous lecture and previous part of the lecture i mean so when you have let's say your equilibrium line and then you have uh, operating line okay let's say this is your um, dilute end so this is would be your y2 and x2 and then this is your uh, concentrated n x1 and y1 so this is your operating line so remember in the derivation of this equation previously you would have uh, this point p and then this would be your point m so this would give you um, y i1 and then this would give you x i1 remember the uh, phase interface mass transfer from y to y i to x i to x the bulk phase concentration so the y uh, y and y2 are the bulk phase concentration y i and y i2 are the interface concentration okay so the line slope slope of the line p m here will depend on the k y a uh, ky and kx value all right remember uh, just uh, just to relate what we have talked about in the previous part of the lecture to the application in this case otherwise you you cannot relate so same thing this for uh, at the top part of the tower at the dilute end so this is your point p and this is your point m so the uh, the gradient for point P and M for point 1 and point 2 uh, should be the same. So from here you can get the yi2 and from here you can get the xi2. That's how you uh, use the values here into the uh, into the equations here, everything here. Okay. So if you use um, overall gas transfer coefficient, for example, then you wouldn't have yi, but rather you would have y star. So y star, if you recall previous lecture also, y star would be the y in equilibrium with the x bulk phase concentration. So for example, if you want to use um, this equation instead, right? So you would need y1 and y1 star. So y1 star would be the y in equilibrium with x1 so if this is your x1 then y1 star would be this okay y1 star the y in equilibrium with x1 and y2 star is the y in equilibrium with x2 so if let's say in absorption and you are using a pure solvent then x2 uh, the solute concentration in the solvent is zero then y2 star would be zero okay so we will see some examples later but just to relate to you here how do you use this equation with this information that i have discussed with you in the previous part of the lecture so when do we use or when do we decide when to use the ng nl nog or nol so it depends on where the major resistance to mass transfer is. Okay, if the major resistance to mass transfer is in the gas phase, uh, e.g. for example, the absorption of acetone from air by water. So water is a good solvent to absorb acetone from air because acetone is very soluble in water. So the overall number of transfer unit based on the gas phase or the film and coefficient uh, based on the film coefficient ng should be used meaning if the solute in the gas phase is highly soluble in the proposed solvent then the major resistance to mass transfer is would be in the gas phase so then we can use uh, ng or nog um, but 
if the major resistance to mass transfer is in the liquid phase, for example, if you want to absorb oxygen using water as the solvent. So we know that water is not a very good solvent for oxygen because it's, it's, it's quite a lot of hard work to dissolve oxygen into water. Uh, so the major, major resistance to mass transfer is in the liquid phase because oxygen is highly soluble in air. Or uh, for stripping process, if you want to strip a highly sol slightly soluble solute from water, uh, uh, then uh, using um, air, for example, as the stripping gas, meaning here the mass transfer major resistance to mass transfer is in the liquid phase, then you should use the uh, equation based on the liquid phase, uh, depending on uh, whether you want to use uh, overall or film mass transfer coefficient. Okay, But most of the time, the film coefficients are not available regardless whether it's based on gas transfer or uh, gas phase or liquid phase, then it is more convenient to use NOG or NOL. So, Okay, so let's say if your major resistance in mass transfer is in the gas phase, so you should use energy. So if your major resistance to mass transfer is in the liquid phase, then you use NOL. Okay, um, find the relation between energy and the absorption factor A. So you know previously that A equals to L over MD. So we are talking about dilute solutions a lot here because it is the most uh, easiest to model and also the most common to, to be used to be separated using absorption. Okay, let's say let's look at the tower here and for dilute solution you can estimate V1 will be equal to V2 and you can just use V instead of V1 or V2 because they are the same. Similarly for L the liquid flow rates so if L2 can be estimated as equal to L1, <coughs> then you can just use um, L uh, without the subscript. So they are all the same. So you can uh, write down the operating line around the dash line. So the dash line here is your control volume. Okay. Then you can write down the inlet equals to outlet. So this one is in equals to out. Then you can uh, rearrange this equation to put uh, either y or x as the subject of the equation. So if you put y as the subject of the equation, you would get this equation here. Okay. It's just rearranging, so you can also pause the video to see if you can get the same equation. And if you put x as the subject of the um, equation, you would end up with this equation. Alright, so for dilute solutions with equilibrium relationship, y star equals to mx. So why here we put y star? Because we want to indicate that this is a, a equilibrium concentration rather than the bulk concentration. Okay, so y star equals to mx and the absorption factor is defined as a equals to L over mv. Then um, if you want to use NOG, for example, then you would have to use the term Y minus Y star. So then you just replace Y star equals to MX into this equation. Then you would get Y minus M times X. So X here is the X, uh, yeah, X here. So that's how it, so you put everything inside this equation. So that's how you get uh, this equation here. Then you can also rearrange and simplify the equation if you want. You can also pause and try to derive the following equation where you will get this. Okay. So I'm not going to show you here because it's just rearranging. It's just uh, algebra here. You know, factorize and uh, expanding everything. Then, um, coming back to the original equation for energy, so for energy, energy equals to integral of um, from y2 to y1, uh, let's respect to dy, y minus y star. Okay, so here you can put y minus y star into this equation. Okay, then you would end up with the integral 
from y2 to y1 with respect to dy this whole new term here so this is to relate that you can write down energy in terms of absorption factor given uh, y2 and x2 and the m is the gradient of the equilibrium line for dilute solution uh, equilibrium line normally is a straight line um, previously we have energy in terms of the integral form from y2 to y1 so let's say we skip the step of deriving the integration and rearranging you can if you're interested you can try to look it up on your own uh, but i'm not teaching maths this time so i'm teaching how to use the equations for uh, designing the column and to relate the uh, related terms so upon integration and rearranging the term you will end up with this equation here so energy equals to this then you can see that you have y2 and y1 and y2 uh, and x2 and the absorption factor so a here is the l over m b so you can also do the similar steps for derivation uh, to relate n o l with the stripping factor so uh, for for stripping the it's 1 over a okay so 1 over a is n b over l but if you put if you follow the same steps for derivation and then you can end up with the final term integrated and rearranged term this is how you relate an ol with the absorption factor so here you can see x2 x1 and y1 and the m as the gradient of the equilibrium line okay now we want to relate an og and an ol to the number of theoretical stages n so if you recall Kramer equation for absorption, you can see this equation here. Okay, you can see this equation here, n equals to blah blah blah. So here you can simplify this, uh, this term here. So this term equal to n ln a. Means just uh, moving the ln a to the left hand side of the equation. And from uh, energy equation previous in the previous slide just now. You can also see that this part here okay so this part is actually equal to n ln a okay then if you combine these two equation then you would end up with energy equals to 1 over 1 minus 1 over a times n ln a then you will get this equation so here from the energy and given the absorption factor, you can get the number of stages. But hold on, energy, everything here, we are talking about back column. So what does the number of stages n got to do with uh, with the situation here? Because when we do packing uh, pack column, we don't really need the number of stages. But wait, uh, we will discuss the relation in the next slide in the following slide so this is to uh, show the similar steps to derive the relation between nol with the theoretical number of stages using the cramps equation for straightening so similarly this one if you move the ln term to the left hand side then you will just end up with this term equal to n ln 1 over a then uh, this one is also equal to n and then 1 over a then you can combine all these two equations to get finally this one okay bearing in mind that we are still in the uh, we are still talking about pack column where there is no uh, number of stages actually in the packing of pack, pack column so previously you have seen this equation here 1 over uh, capital K Y prime equals to 1 over small K Y prime plus M over K X prime. So uh, this one, we can rewrite this equation in terms of volumetric mass transfer coefficient. So instead of K X K Y, you can have K Y A, K Y A and K X A. You just, just multiply everything with the term A. Okay, so even previously also, H O G equals to this term. HG is equal to this term, HL equals to this term, 
so if possible i mean you, you can actually do this on your own you can derive upon derivation you can rearrange and substitute you can get this relation here okay so try to pause the video and do the derivation um it's not that difficult so it's just rearranging so you can see here uh, this part here you have the term kya here you have also the term kya here also then here also so we just uh, substitute and rearrange then you will end up with this okay and the over l you just it's just rearranging and substituting it's not really that hard so you can what's important here is you want to relate the height of overall plus transfer unit uh, to the hg hdu in terms of gas phase is in film coefficient and hl and also uh, with the m the uh, gradient of the equilibrium line with the gas flow rate and with the liquid flow rate in the column similarly using the uh, liquid phase uh, mass transfer so we, we've seen this equation also okay in terms of uh, this so previously maybe you have m double prime lah instead of m but it doesn't matter here so then given that this hl is equal to this and then you, you can also get h what is hl uh, oh yeah it's, it's given here hg and hl so you can if you can derive this you can derive this okay so try to just pause the video and try to derive the equations on your own Okay, there's also another concept of HEPT or the definition is height equivalent to a theoretical plate. So if in tray towers, a theoretical tray is defined as a tray in which equilibrium is attained between the gas or vapor leaving and, and, and the liquid leaving the tray. Meaning in the tray, the gas and the liquid leaving the tray are in equilibrium or would be expected to be in equilibrium. But in packed towers, the same approach can be used where the HETP in uh, the unit of length in meters or in feet is defined as the height of the packed column necessary to give a separation equal to one theoretical plate. So it, the idea here, height equivalent to a theoretical plate, so if in packed column, we calculate the height of the packing instead of the uh, number of pages. But here we still want to relate what would be the um, theoretical stages, the equivalent to the height of the packing that we have uh, calculated okay so it can be defined here uh, the height of the packing z required is equal to n times HETP so n here is the number of theoretical stages needed where you can calculate it from uh, Cranter equation or you can also get it from the operating line versus uh, equilibrium line so, because regardless of whether it's tray or pack tower we still can plot the equilibrium line versus uh, operating line on the same graph. Okay, so z equals to n times HTTP and also z is equal to HOG times NOG. And previously, you can also relate NOG equal to n times ln a over 1 minus 1 over a. So here you can um, replace this NOG with this term then you can get z equals to hog times n ln a over 1 minus 1 over a so that is z so z equals to also a n times http so but the goal here is you want to relate the http with the packing term okay you can uh, get from here, HETP equals to Z over N. So here, you can move N to the left hand side and get Z over N equals to HOG times ln A over 1 minus 1 over A. And you can rearrange and you get HETP equals to this equation. Okay. Finally, let's move on to the example so you can make sense of all the numbers and equations that you have seen previously. Um, so, 
without the question, external is being absorbed by water in a flat tower having a cross sectional area of uh, 0 0.186 meters squared at 293 Kelvin and 101.32 kilopascal. The inlet air contains 2.6 mole percent of acetone and the outlet uh, contains 0 0.5 mole percent of acetone. The gas flow is 13.65 kmol per hour of inner air. The equilibrium relation between acetone and water is given by y equals to uh, 1.185 times x. The pure water inlet flow is 45.36 kmol per hour. Film and overall coefficients for the given flows in the tower are given here. So you are given the values of KYA uh, film, K KXA film and KYA overall. Right, be careful of the units here. Okay, first, uh, let's look at ABCD, the question ABCD. Uh, use HG and NG to calculate the tower height. Use HOG and NOG to calculate the tower height. Use the equation here to calculate energy and the tower height. And using analytical equation, calculate HTTP, number of steps N and the tower height. So essentially, uh, this question just want to show you uh, that you can calculate the tower height using different methods. You can use HG and NG, you can use HG and NG, you can use this relation, you can use HTTP and N, uh, depending on the information that is available to you. On to the solution, so you can draw the tower. So as usual, you have your tower b one y one b two y two at the outlet, the inlet liquid l two x two and l one x one. So based on the information given from the question, we have b prime because this is the flow rate of the inlet air, and l prime so the flow rate of the pure solvent, and the inlet concentration is y one equal to zero point zero two six. Outlet concentration of acetone is this y two. And because we are using pure water, your X2 equals to 0. And also given the cross-sectional area of the tower is S equal to 0 0.186 meters squared. And the equilibrium relation is given uh, as shown. Then you can write down the operating line equation for the tower. Inlet equals to outlet. Okay, in equals to outlet. Then you can uh, solve for unknown because here you know y2, you know y1, you know x2 but you don't know x1. So you can um, try to, uh, you can substitute the numbers inside to calculate what is x1. So you can pause and try to solve for x1. I assume you have paused so I can just show the answer. So you get x1 equals to 0 0.00648. So this would be the outlet concentration of the acetone. Next is to calculate the total molar flow rate in kilomole per second. Why do we have to convert the units from kilomole per hour to kilomole per second? This is because if you see the question previously, uh, the units for KYA, KXA, everything are given in terms of kilomole per second uh, per meter cube per mole fraction. So that's why to be consistent with the unit, we need to convert in kilomole per second. So um, let's calculate V1. So V1 equals to V prime over Y minus Y1. So this one is V prime and this is your Y1. Then we get uh, this in terms of kilomole per hour, then you just convert into per second. So this would be your V1. So here, just to draw, to just to help you visualize, this V1 and Y1, V2, Y2, L2, X2, L1, X1. You convert everything in terms of kilomole per second. But then next is you convert V2, and then, uh. This is for dilute solution, so you can see that okay, there are some difference between the values of V1 and V2. So let's use the average values of V1 and V2 for subsequent calculations that require the term V. Okay, so V, we use the average V1 plus V2 divided by 2. You use this as your V value. Next, you convert the liquid flow rates also. 
So that one is L1 and next is L2. Actually, L1 and L2 is not much difference. If it is the same, you can just use the given value here. Okay. So, um, for example, 1A using Hg and Ng to calculate the tower height. So, first we calculate the uh, Hg. Hg value, so Hg equal to V over small k y prime a s. So you are given already the kya. S is the cross-sectional area given. So you just put all these values into the equation to get Hg equals to 0.548 meter. Then you can you need to calculate um, Ng. So this is where you need to be careful a bit. It's a bit tricky here. So Ng, you know, is can be calculated using this equation because uh, of dilute solution and the term y minus y i in m here would be given would be defined uh, by this equation and um, recall from previous part of the lecture if you can visualize this in uh, this diagram and then recall that uh, this term equals to this and for dilute solution uh, this and this can be approximated to be close to 1. So, can, in other words, can be ignored. Lah. Okay, so you can simplify here. Kx over Ky prime equals to the uh, delta y here over delta x. Okay, then similarly, if you have, the, the thing is here in the question, you don't have Kx or Ky, but rather you have Kxa and uh, Kya. So it would be the same thing also. So if you just uh, make use of the values here, you can get the slope of your uh, point P to point M. The slope of the line between the bulk phase concentration and the interface concentration. So just um, put in the numbers. So negative, it should have a negative value here, okay? So you get negative 1.5. 6 to 9 ticks for the gradient of the point from bulk phase to the uh, interface concentration. Because we're going to need to use this to calculate this thing here. Okay, continue the solution. So the goal here is not, 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 not yet the goal, um, meaning you need to find this, uh, the value of this term to be able to calculate the ng. So to do this, you need to find out what is uh, y1, uh, yi1 and yi2. So if you uh, can plot the, not draw the column again, this would be your y1 and this would be your y2. This is your x2 and then your uh, x1. Then you can also plot the um, plot to visualize the operating line and the uh, equilibrium line to act like this. So let's say this would be your um, equilibrium line which is y equals to 1.185x okay and then uh, from here you know your x2 is 0 your y2 is 0 0.005 so this is your dilute end of the power then it will give you the point somewhere here okay so this is your y2 and x2 equals to 0. Then you have y1 is 0 0.026 and x1 previously calculated 0 0.00648. Uh, okay, so you have uh, y1 and x1. So is y1, so is x1. So this is your point P for point number one, uh, the concentrated end of your tower, and this is your point P for point number two, P1 and P2. Okay, then um, using the gradient that you know just now, uh, okay, the gradient between the bulk phase concentration and the interface concentration M, okay, just randomly draw some line here, it's a negative uh, gradient, so this would give you the end point for point number one. So here, you would get y i 1, y i 1, y i 1, then here you would get 
x i 1 and remember at the interface there is no resistance so you can relate the interface concentration y i 1 and x i 1 using the equilibrium relation so then you can use this equation because this is your, the given equilibrium relation okay so the the the, the, the gradient uh, for this point for this line p1 and m1 is given by uh, y1 minus yi1 here yeah, divided by x1 minus xi1 and the gradient is equal to uh, kxa over ky8 you have calculated it in the previous slide so here you all you need to do is to key in the known values and solve for the unknown equation y1 is known i'm sorry x1 is also known so the unknown is yi1 and xi1 so you have two unknowns the equation can solve for xi1 and yi1 solve so let's say you put this equation inside equation one then you can solve for xi1 then after you solve for xi1 you can put inside this equation to solve for yi1 so you get yi1 equals to 0 0.0154 similarly you do the same for uh, point number two so for point number two it should have the same gradient with p1 and 1 so here is your point and 2 i.e. your interface concentration so this would give you xi2 and this would give you yi2 so the gradient here and the gradient here so you can write down the gradient uh, y2 minus yi2 this minus this over yx2 minus xi2 equals to this and then you can also use the equilibrium relation at the interface concentration so you can write down uh, yi2 equals to 1.185 times xi2 then same thing you just find uh, xi2 and yi2 so you get xi2 then you can get yi2 then now you get everything you need to calculate this term oops okay so yeah we'll continue okay now that you know all the values already you get yi1 and yi2 from the previous uh, calculation you key in the values and you get this term and then you can put it into the mg equation so the mg equation is this then y1 is 0 0.026 y2 is 0 0.005 and y minus y i m is this put in then you get the mg then you calculate the tower height tower height is equal to z equals to ht times mg now you know and hg already to be calculated uh, hg is equals to v prime over y a s okay then you get this so the tower height is 1.94 meters using hg and mg okay so if you plot the lines using excel uh, you can plot the operating line and equilibrium line using excel uh, so here you would have x1 and y1 with the points here and x2 and y2 with the points here and then for the uh, blue line here equilibrium line is actually just y equals to 1.185 times x okay and the gradient here the gradient here uh, is the value that you calculated previously lah. Okay, the gradient there is what? N equals to uh, negative 1.62 and 6. Uh, I mean, it's just to recap what we did uh, just now. Okay, the gradient between the point 2 and uh, point uh, P, P2 and M2 is also the same with P1 and M1. So here is P1 is m1 p2 and m2 1 and 2 denotes the location in the tower and 
P indicates the point of bulk concentration, M indicates the point of uh, interface concentration. Uh, later, I mean, in the next part of the question, part B, is where you need to use HOG to calculate the uh, tower height. And when using HOG and NOG, you would need to calculate the equilibrium concentration uh, in, in equilibrium with the X. You need to calculate Y1 star, and Y1 star is the uh, Y in equilibrium with X1. So here also is shown. So if you have X1 here, so if you drag towards the equilibrium line, that would give you Y1 star. Or if you can also put it in terms in, into the equation straight away. So Y1 star equals to 1.185 times X1. We will do the uh, example in the next slide. I mean to say here, I just want to show you in a proper Excel chart that you can also, also visualize this uh, chart. Okay, so for part B of the example where you need to calculate HOG and NOG to find the tower height, then uh, we know HOG is this, uh, V over, now you use the capital K, then uh, you get different value HOG compared to the HG. Next is we need to calculate the NOG. Okay, now here you see the Y star. Okay, so Y star. Uh, y minus Y star M is equal to this equation here. So you just take note Y1 star and Y2 star. Those are the things that you need to calculate. But personally, I think to calculate Y1 star and Y2 star um, is much easier compared to calculating the interface concentration because y1 and y2 star you can easily use the equilibrium relation okay as i mentioned earlier y1 star is the y in equilibrium with x1 so given the equilibrium relation you can just key in the value of x1 and then you get y1 star and then um, y2 star would be in equilibrium with x2 but x2 equals to 0 so y2 star would be equal to 0 then you know y1 star and y2 star you just put the values into the equation to get what is y minus y star m you get this then you know y1 and y2 already previously then you can calculate the energy so you put this value energy equal to 2.049 then Z equals to H HOG times energy, HOG is 0 0.949 times energy is this, then you get 1.94 meters. Same with uh, what we have calculated in part A of the question. Okay, so for part C, you, you are asked to use this uh, equation to calculate the tower height. So, um, A equals to L over MV. So we have calculated or we have decided what would be the values of L and V that we are going to use for subsequent calculation previously. So uh, calculate A first. So A is L over MV. This is your L. This is your M. M is the gradient of the equilibrium line. And this is your average gas flow rate. So this is your values of A. Then you can just key in the numbers uh, into the equation so you get energy. Okay. So you get energy, energy equals to 2.042 .0 and Z equals to HOG times energy. HOG doesn't change, so HOG is still V over KYAS, the same value as what you have calculated previously, 0 0.949. Then you get about this value which is um, close enough to 1.94 meters. Um, finally, to use the HTTP and method to calculate the tower height, so you are given HTTP equals to this uh, equation. So you know HOG is this. A you have calculated already previously. Then you get what is HTTP. Then NOG equals to this equation. Then you can calculate N. Then Z equals to N times HTTP. You get N already. You get HTTP already. So you just multiply the two values. You get 1.938 meters. Okay, so in conclusion, you have more than one way to calculate the height of a flat tower, and it all depends uh, which way you want to use is 
depending on the information you need. Uh, any information given to you, provided to you. So, uh, yeah, that's all for the part, this part of the lecture. It's quite easy to follow, right? I hope so. So, if any question, please ask me in the WhatsApp group. Or if you require a live session, please let me know so that we can arrange a time. Uh, till then, take care and um, please submit the tutorial. Thank you.